just let me know if i am audible to all of you yes audible great great thank you so much for confirming basically right great so welcome once again all of you to our inner circle session how many of you are attending this uh, session for the first time just type me in the comment box and if possible just uh, let us welcome the new people who are attending for the first time please also provide your name and location yes dr pankaj yes great dr minu welcome from faridabad great great so i think couple of you are for the first time great and how are things going on uh, right now with the other people in terms of those who are already practicing conventional and basal implants if you can tell me primarily if you are doing more of conventional more of basal uh, you know what is any decision criteria you apply for uh, doing those kind of implantology if you can just those who are already there i see a lot of our uh, regular names also over here regular participants dr ankur dr prerna dr nisha dr pankaj dr tamil dr sajit great great dr jigesh shroff dr sundeep dr himanshu great so nice to see all of you so quickly just another 2 3 minutes we'll give just so that you know uh, to understand the pulse from all of you if you people are doing conventional or basal if you are doing conventional what is the reason if you are doing basal what is the reason uh, if there is anything which is like kind of uh, you are not able to do you can just hello dr rahul so dr kalpana you are doing basal great okay because today we are going to discuss conventional basal what should be the decision making uh lab protocols how exactly we can you know handle our cases how many of you have placed r line implants whether it is basal or conventional just type me in the comment box if you can type whether you placed uh, basal r line or conventional r line so when i say conventional r line i'm looking at the two piece design which is the dis and cih so if you are not able to understand don't worry we are going to i uh, you not know, discuss all of it very soon okay so dr ranjita now i have shifted to basal okay dr kalpana great what about the others please if you can just quickly type whether you are doing conventional or basal in the comment box so single tooth replacement i prefer conventional okay if more three in a row i give basal or conventional dr jigesh is using more of basal imanshu is using more of conventional great 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 so dr kiran now you are doing more of basal good so good to know we have a mixed crowd and today end of this session you will be able to you know very nicely in your mind figure whether you should be doing conventional or basal implants dr pang no problem okay great great so dr saiju is doing both okay great any one of you has tried any of the r line implant series whether it is the basal or conventional before we start just let me quickly know let me know in the comment box please so anyone having tried the r line series of implant let it be basal or conventional please let me know so that i know exactly you know the kind of people around and i will be able to help you out 
ओके सो डॉक्टर महेश यू हैव ट्राइड बेजल ओके ओके ग्रेट ग्रेट सो ओके डॉक्टर रंजिता इज यूजिंग ऑनलाइन इम्प्लांट्स लॉट ऑफ यू आई सी आर सीइंग इट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सो लेट मी जस्ट पुट अप माय डॉक्टर रमनीत इज प्योर कन्वेंशनल ओके ओके सो लेट मी जस्ट पुट अप माय व्हाइट बोर्ड एंड गिव यू अ ब्रीफ आइडिया and give you a brief idea about uh what are conventional what are basal implants i hope that is not the con uh, confusion with all of you but still i will just give you a brief idea about what exactly how the system should bifurcate in the mind so i hope all of you are today i request all of you to keep a paper and pen ready and take some notes also if you wish to and let me just type in uh, put in my white screen are you all able to see my white screen uh, my my presentation please let me know great okay so when it comes to the decision outline related to the conventional and basal implants the first thing we should know is what is conventional and what is basal implant now any implant any implant which is having the two piece which means the screw part of the implant is different and the abutment of it is different we call them the two piece implants just give me a minute my i think there is some system issue just give me a minute i think this will be better yeah okay no problem so whenever whenever we see any implant so we all know that this threaded portion goes in the patient's mouth okay so here if we see this is the threaded portion which goes in the patient's mouth here if we see this threaded portion goes in the patient's mouth so this threaded portion is called as the fixture of the implant okay and whenever we want to differentiate primarily between the implants we differentiate the implant into single piece or two piece so as the name suggests this single piece implant as the name suggests this single piece implant the implant as well as the abutment both are in one piece design both are in one piece design as opposed to that in the conventional implant the implant part is separate and there is another component which then is seated on it on which the prosthetic is then fit in so this will be one of the easiest ways to classify type of implants one is the conventional which are primarily of two piece design and the other which will be the basal implants which are primarily the single piece design i hope this is clear just quickly you can type clear so that i can go ahead okay so we are looking at primarily the conventional implants so the first classification so this is very important some of you may feel that this is very basic but trust me guys this is very important so that once and for all it is clear in your mind so i hope this is clear okay now when we look at the r line implant series it consists of the single piece implants and the two piece implants and like we just discuss right now the single piece implant means the basal implants and over here we are looking at the two piece implants which are the conventional so the r line series of implants will have your conventional implants as well as the basal implants to take it ahead now the basal implants which are the single piece implants will again be subdivided into cement retained implants and screw retained implants so they are again subdivided so this part which you are looking over here this is the cement retained part which means when the prosthesis will come it will get cemented on this abutment 
and over here we have the implant in the single piece format however the abutment provides the prosthesis to be screw retained which means there will be a screw which goes through your crowns which goes and sits onto your abutments is this clear so far please let me know so to summarize we have the conventional implants and the basal implants in basal implants we have the cementable and the screw retain right can i just proceed just let me know i hope this is making sense to you so far please pay minute attention right now because as the things we go ahead i don't want you to later on get complicated so for the sake of simplicity again the implants which are surface treated or surface roughened they are called as the kos implants or compressive implants so this is nothing but similar to your conventional implants with a slightly modified design with the surface roughening done available in single piece format which means your fixture and abutment are in one piece which allows your crown to be cemented on top of it and you have the smooth surface implant which are called as the bcs implant which are totally surface polished there is no surface coating on it they work by principle of osseo fixation which means this implants compulsorily you have to place in the opposing cortical to work this implants can be placed the qos implants can be placed in cancellous bone also so now we are looking at the r line implant series basal implant cement retained bcs implant and qos implant similarly when the design offers a screw component they will be called as a screw retained qos mu so mu stands for multi unit because this implant has an abutment which allows the prosthetic to fit on it this is called as the multi unit implants so now we have the bcs mu and qos mu is this clear so far so this side over here there will be the screw retained implants screw retained prosthesis so this is s means screw retained and this is the cement retained however this is still a single piece system is this clear to all of you just let me know clear just put up clear so that i can proceed great okay when we look at the two piece implants which are commonly referred to as the conventional implants why they are called two piece already we discuss i will just revise it because the threaded implant part is submerged in the bone and later on the prosthesis is put in after connecting the abutment to it so the implant and the abutment the fixture and the abutment are in two pieces this property allows this implant to get delayed loading which means that you can submerge this implants in the bone let it heal and then continue with your prosthetic work in the r line series of implants in the r line series of implants we have the two connections which means where the implant is connecting with the abutment you can either have a hexagonal connection so hexagon means six sides or you can have a conical design it's like a conical connection so inside the fixture the abutment will sit on a conical platform so this is a conical platform and so one on the right side of your screen over here this is the conical platform and this designs are the hexagonal platform in the hexagonal platform again we have the two designs if you see here this is a sharp tapered design called as the cih or compressive internal hex 
and the other one this one over here is called as the dsi or dental spiral implant so i know this may be sounding very confusing right now but if you pay attention in the next couple of minutes you will get crystal clarity why the different designs and how to use it where to use it so let me quickly summarize for all of you before i move ahead so when we talk about implants when i talk about implants when we talk about implants okay so this is implants we are looking at either two piece implants or one piece implants one piece implants are commonly called as basal implants two piece implants are commonly called as conventional implants in the basal implants you may have the cement retained or you may have the screw retained options both of them available either as kos or bcs so you can have a bcs screw retain you can have a kos screw retain you can have a bcs cement retain and you can have a kos cement retain is this clear so far in the conventional situation conventional implants you can have the design of the implant having a hexagonal connection which means the abutment and the implant have a hexagonal fit or you can have a conical fitting implant to abutment junction in the conical fitting in the sorry in the hexagonal fitting you have a sharp tapered implant which is called as the cih compressive internal hex and you have a traditional flat bullet shape implant which is called as the dsi implant is this clear to all just let me know yes just put up yes in the comment box so now we can go much more in finer details okay great great i hope is this i hope this is not confusing to all of you also you can have these zygomatic implants now i want all of you to identify the type subtype and category of this implant so i want you to write that whether this is single piece or two piece whether this is bcs or kos or whether this is cement table and screw retain so you mention the type subtype and the category of implant quickly in the comment box all of you who have been paying attention will be able to do this so i want you now with this knowledge you will be able to classify identify any system in the market right now we are discussing the r line series of implant so i want all of you to type what is the subtype of this implant great right so again to help you out this is a single piece implant am i correct so let's go step wise so first this is a first you have to see whether this is single piece or two piece so this is single piece implant which means it comes in the category of basal implants in the basal implants since there is no connection of the multi unit this is a cement table implant and the geography of this implant is a smooth surface implant which is a basal implant so this is a single piece basal bcs implant cement retain type similarly if i look at the right side this is a two piece implant which means it's a conventional implant it has a rough surface over here and the possibility of attaching the abutment on it which means it's a two piece two piece conventional implant now all conventional implants have the possibility by default to make it either cement table or screw retain which means whoever has worked with the conventional implant or has any knowledge will agree that over a conventional implant by default either you can create cement type prosthesis 
or you can create screw type processes that is an option you have the moment you place a conventional implant in the basal implant the moment you place the implant either you have decided to make a cement retain or you have decided to make a screw retain later on that it is not an option you have already got fixed but in the conventional implant you can decide even later on during the processes whether you want to make a cement retained or a screw retained do you are you able to understand the small small things now okay can i proceed just let me know now we will come to small one two few cases i will show you but before that i want to give you a brief idea about the indications and a mindset of how you should be doing what you you know selecting the implants so this guidelines which i am mentioning they are very practical guidelines which means they are not textbook guidelines they are the guidelines which i will give you based on the years of my experience in the field of implantology so just type ready if you are ready and i will give you certain practical guidelines certain guidelines related to your practice management which will be very useful for you in the thought process while offering the patient basal or conventional and type of basal type of conventional yes dr ramnit we are coming to that answer only the first thing you should do for any case you have after clinical examination is to take a opg x ray so step number 1 so step number 1 is you will do a clinic let me just pull out a blank screen so first step number 1 you will pull out take out the clinical examination during clinical examination you will divide the case whether it is a anterior case or it is a posterior case if it is a front teeth anterior case you need to observe the patient's lip profile smile line because if it is a high lip line that case is much more aesthetically challenging than a patient with a low lip line if it is a high lip line it is much more aesthetically challenging to replace the teeth than a lower lip line so the first clinical step you will do is examine whether the case is having requirement of anterior teeth or posterior teeth and after that you will see the smile line of the patient whether it is a high lip line or a low lip line in the posterior jaw you will see the occlusion or the bite of the patient which means that let's say the upper patient has come for lower right side replacement patient has come for lower right side replacement you need to check the bite on the contralateral side as well as you need to check the interocclusal clearance so there is a possibility that the patient may have let's say this is the ridge there is a possibility patient may have the missing teeth on the lower right side but the upper is completely supra erupted which may change your treatment plan because there is not sufficient interocclusal clearance how many of you have placed the implants and then realized that now i don't have sufficient interocclusal clearance after placing the implants just type me in the comment box has this happened with you has it happened with anyone or not happened you can say not happened if you are always so today i want all of you to take down lot of clinical notes because this small small points otherwise you will forget so has it happened to you that after placing the implants you have realized or the lab technician says you don't have interocclusal clearance if it has happened type happened if it is not happened say not happened 
which means I am sure that you all are checking the interocclusal clearance. So just type in the comment box. Yeah. Okay. So, right. Great. So some doctors are checking and for some doctors, this has happened. So now this is like a eye opener. Great. 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 So many doctors are planning nicely. That is good to know. Next, what you will do once this is done is ask for a OPG X-ray or a CBCT X-ray. Either you will ask a OPG X-ray. Now, lot of doctors will say, but no, Dr. Rohan, you have always said you do the work with OPG X-ray. Now you are today you are saying why order CBCT X-ray. Why I'm telling this is for the beginners. With the experience, lot of us can work with the OPG, but the beginners who are not able to assess the width. See, on the OPG, you can always assess the height. For example, let me pull out an OPG X-ray. It's very easy for all of us to assess the height available. But it may not be very easy for a lot of us to assess the width available in the area of implant placement. So if this was your case, you could have easily assessed the height available. But buccolingual width may become difficult for that reason. For that reason, it is recommended for doctors who are new relatively to order if required also a CBCT X-ray. So first step was your clinical and now the second step is your X-ray. In the X-ray, OPG X-ray is compulsory which means that even if you are ordering a CBCT X-ray, you should always order OPG along and that is a separate X-ray which means that we don't use the OPG view of a CBCT X-ray. We order a separate OPG X-ray and if required, we order a separate CBCT X-ray. If you are an expert, you order only the OPG X-ray. If you are not an expert, you order CBCT, but make sure you order, tell him to, I need separate OPG. I don't want the OPG view of a CBCT X-ray. Now, unfortunately, the time doesn't permit me to, you know, give you details of why this is done. So right now you take this at the face value. Some other time, you know, when we are doing the Q&A or having more time, we can discuss why I tell this. But the bottom line remains that OPG is one of the most important X-rays for your diagnosis or your start of the assessment. You will be surprised how your diagnosis changes simply by observing the OPG X-ray rather than the CBCT X-ray. <coughs> how many of you are aware of this tip or regarding the OPG which has been shared in the previous sessions also and have tried it and have seen the difference? Just type me in the comment box or if you felt the difference, just type difference. You have felt the difference in the comment box. Just let me know. So every line you may feel is very stupid or very simple. But trust me, these are the small, small things which will make the big difference in your practice. Great. Right. Yeah, if you are Dr. Kundal, if you are doing CBCT, then CT scan is not required. Either you do the CT scan and OPG or you do the CBCT and OPG or only OPG. But don't we don't require CT scan as well as CBCT. That is not needed. Now, once you have the data, which is clinical as discussed and radiological as discussed, from this scientific point of view, From the scientific point of view, we will start determining what to do for the patient. Okay. How many of you are ready for this? Just let me know. Now, after this, you will become crystal clear about when to do basal, when to do conventional and what should be your decision making criteria. So just type ready if you all are ready and you have understood so far. Because now when I say KOS, BCS, MU, DSI, CIH, you shouldn't get, uh, you know, confused. Great.
okay now how to go about with the decision making let me show you is my white screen visible to all just let me know i think one second let me just switch my screen just give me a minute please i will just put on a whiteboard for all of you now is my white screen visible to all just let me know yes if it is visible okay so once you have done the clinical examination as well as the radiographical examination the first question you need to ask yourself is is the patient having enough interocclusal clearance which means the patient could have a deep bite or the patient could have had a posterior region where the uppers have supra erupted whatever be the situation the first question you need to ask yourself is is there sufficient clearance whenever you whenever you don't have sufficient clearance the answer to your problem is a screw retain prosthesis whenever you don't have sufficient clearance the answer is a screw retain prosthesis which can be achieved with either the basal qs bcs mu or with the conventional it could be dsi it could be cih it could be csi or it could be any other system but the answer for a good output will be a screw retain solution when there is not sufficient interocclusal clearance whenever the patient you feel is a bruxer is a bruxer is a panchuer is a non compliant patient is a patient with high aesthetic needs or with a poor bone profile which means that you are not sure that when you place the implant you will get good torque or you will not get good torque whenever you are landing up with such a situation or thought in the mind the answer to this is giving either a conventional implant or a basal implant with a screw retained option how many of you are having lot of bulb on movements with this just let me know bulb on have you ever analyzed the case like this before have you ever analyzed cases like this before in this following sequence just type if you are having a bulb on movement just type bulb on in the comment box whenever now that you have decided that you will require a probably a screw retained implant solution now you think about whether the case is possible with immediate loading or it is not possible with delayed uh, immediate loading which means it is a delayed loading 
if you are going for immediate loading now you think about whether the bone quality is good or the bone quality is not good if the bone quality is not good straight away you are looking at the basal implants mu if the bone quality is good the world is open for you which means that you can either look at kos mu or you can look at cih or dsi implant now let us discuss more in detail about this group of implants how to make the selection is so far everything clear to you is so far everything clear to you just let me know clear is so far things getting clear please let me know if you have any queries you should ask right now just let me know if it is clear so far to all of you just give me a minute any queries so far just let me know okay so let's make the decision now whether to use kos mu or cih or dsi whenever whenever the patient whenever the doctor see when you are doing the kos mu implant your positioning of the implant will not allow you to change the multi unit which means that the moment you place your implant by default you have a pre fixed implant and a pre fixed position of the multi unit which is non negotiable however when you place a two piece implant you can play around with the collar height of the multi unit along with the angulation which means the doctors who are having the good surgical skills should think about the kos mu implant the doctors who are having the slightly lesser surgical skill should think about the two piece cih or dsi implant for patients who are on gag reflex senior age group kos mu finds a very good solution the reason being that this implants you can place very easily without juggling for gagging patients patients who are lesser cooperative you can place this implants very quickly with a single drill and start your prosthetic work but if you are using the two piece implants you will have to spend additional time money effort money because you have to keep the stock of multi units and time and effort because you have to keep selecting the multi units select the collar select the angle and then place it take an x ray verify the fit of the multi unit and then go ahead so one of the biggest indication of kos mu implant is stress free work those of you who are wanting the stress free life single drill place the implant screw it in prosthesis everything sorted kos mu is one very good solution the bcs the, the cih and the dsi implant you have to take the multi unit match the multi unit select the collar keep the armamentarium and then take it ahead between the dsi and cih implant in case if you are planning to place for dsi implant for dsi implant is the classical implantology classical implantology let me just share my screen i think yeah
what did dsi implant it is the classical implantology which means you are doing like the traditional implantology one or two drills place the implant submerge it and for cih implant it is for the tall and tilted type of protocols ttphl type of protocols where you are engaging the opposing cortical plates and this is compulsory this is not an option so those of you who want to do tilted implants suppose the engaging cortical bypass with the two piece implant cih is the implant of choice those of you who want to do traditional implants dsi is the implant of choice those of you who don't want to put too much of stress related to the abutment part you go for the kos place the implant multiunit is already there directly start with the prosthetic part those of you who want precision in the work exact collar exact everything i want 17 degree 40 degree exact everything you go for the dsi or cih the another advantage of cih implant with the cortical engagement it allows you to load immediately which means those of you who are looking at a two piece implant with option of immediate loading you should be looking at this cih implant those of you who want to do immediate loading with traditional implants dsi you do it only for your multiple implant cases which means 3 4 implants segment cases full arch cases never do immediate loading for a single tooth on a dsi which means the choice of delayed load implant for us is a dsi implant so if you have a lower 6 extraction socket you want to place a single implant wait for healing place a dsi you have a immediate sinus lift extraction sinus lift kind of scenario in the upper 6 Place a DSI. Do a delayed loading. Again, in terms of treatment planning selection for a single tooth, from the practice management point of view, unless it is an anterior tooth for the posterior, unless the patient is ready to pay premium, which means you are able to charge forty, sixty, seventy thousand rupees, always go for delayed loading. why would you want to take the burden and the stress of putting two implants three implants loading it immediately and having the failure because we are on a single tooth patient's life is not affected is able to chew however the choice of implant in the anterior for will always be immediate loading because that is the aesthetic concern of the patient so from a practice management point of view you can charge premium to the patient because as opposed to other doctors you are the doctor who is giving a immediate load implant to the patient the patient can walk out of your clinic with a tooth in the mouth does this make lot of scientific and practical sense to you just let me know yes in the comment box nakin just type yes in the comment box if it is making sense to you why would you take the stress of putting an upper seven two implants probably a pterygoid implant loading it immediately and creating that stress in your life unless the patient is ready to pay a premium just go for a traditional implant put it forget it load it after 2 3 months so one of the clinical indication or practice management indication for immediate loading is patient ready to pay premium if i want to go today itself to new york in the night itself will the flight people charge me premium for the last minute booking yes or no because i want it today itself i want to fly tonight only that's my requirement however you can yourself conflict on this rule if the ridge is very resolved and the case decides determines a bcs implant 
and make your life simple by placing let's say patient is having four five six missing patient is not in hurry but the ridge is resolved for your own stress-free life you will select that case as a single piece bcs case if the interarch distance is too much or i would say available and if the interarch distance is less you will select that case as a screw retained bcs so that now the resorb ridge is no longer your stress because the design of your implant is supporting your work the advantage of a bcs mu implant will be you can place the implant and wait for few days or few weeks and then load it because there is no abutment head there is no lateral pressure of the tongue there is no post pressure from the opposing teeth so technically they are offloaded it is not recommended but in case if you put four or five basal implants one of them is less torque you can connect the other three with the transitional prosthesis it's a screw retain prosthesis later on remove the transitional prosthesis and connect all four also in your permanent prosthesis so now are you able to like rationalize that the rule is there is no rule the moment you start understanding small small things related to the airline system how the one system with the free few kits and the spill protocol you will be able to start handling all types of patients in your implantology practice and create the situation which is favorable for you lot of people make the mistake that they keep jumping from one system to other thinking that the next system is better than what they are having in hand but in fact if you select just one good system and master it entire implantology you can cover how many of you are finding many many bulb on moments just type bulb on so far what is the new thing you have learned or understood one tip which is really you know connected with you i want all of you to put in the comment box do you think that by incorporating this thought process your life will get simplified so one of the important thing to keep this in mind keep this as a golden line frame it somewhere and keep it is one of the important selection criteria to select the implant is a stress free situation for yourself we don't want any gold medal for the work we are doing where we'll do extensive bone augmentation sinus lift and put a dsi implant and put it on facebook we don't want to screw our back in that case i will go for a basal implant patient comes to me lower 6 7 punch or bruxer not ready to comply you know i'll go for a dsi implant do a delayed loading let the implant heal patient says doctor i i i have bilateral missing teeth but i want you to restore this side first next i will do this side of course i cannot do immediate loading unilaterally I do delayed loading and then get the teeth over there patient in the anterior zone single tooth very high aesthetic needs problem maker patient you feel from the discussions that is going to create lot of stress high lip line give a two piece implant that will give you the ability to change the abutments create the pro proper collar create the profile the way you wanted patient with a resorb ridge coming to your practice ready to pay doctor i want teeth at all cost go for screw retain basal implants because now you have done the basal implants you have a screw retain prosthesis you keep calling him every 6 8 months for maintenance keep charging him he will be happy you will be happy changes prosthesis after 5 years 
again you can earn from there retrievability solution is there patient having very weak bones but not able to afford place the bcs kos single piece implant do the intraoral welding create the retrievable prosthesis like what we discussed in our lecture for the welding so can you see how with the thought process one system is allowing you to decide what is best not only for the patient but also keeping your interest in mind so one of the biggest criteria we keep discussing always the patient budget patient budget but above that you should add the criteria your own stress free life we don't want to incorporate implantology in our practice at the cost of our health how many of you agree to this statement apart from it we don't want the system to burden us unnecessarily where the patients are not ready to pay but we are forced to go by implant then abutments then some drivers and the list never ends and it's very very expensive every time you want to buy a new abut type of abutment the driver is different i cannot take names on a social media platform but you are smart to understand here you have one system one small kit just couple of drivers you have and everything and anything you can do especially for those of you who are adapting to the kos and bcs mu implants screw retain what else do you need i mean you know you are having the drills you can place the cement retain implants you place the kos bcs mu implants if you want retrievability you do the retrievable work on top of it as simple as that i come to almost like a conclusion why would anyone even think about a two piece implants except in a very very few selected cases so if you ask me my implant of choice will be the single piece mu implant those doctors who have worked with multi units for immediate loading you will know sometimes the placement of implant takes 5 minutes but just to connect the multi unit you will take 20 minutes to half an hour and here we are having the system the kos bcs mu we place one 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 drill place the screw retain implant scan it and send it to the lab why do you want to make your life stress full just to save few thousands of rupees and then later on go to the physiotherapist do the mri screw your back miss your working days if you go back home you are not in a good mood you want to just keep sleeping you don't have family time why do you want to create that kind of stress in your life why can't we just charge patient 10000 rupees more and do stress free work is that one patient more important than our neck and our back and the headache which it is giving us how many of you agree to this statements which i am making right now with i'll just show now a couple of cases and then after that we can have some q and a where you know any other doubts which are left even after showing the cases you can ask so let me just pull up my case cases now what is this system application okay yeah is my screen visible to all are you able to identify now in this particular case are you able to identify this patient wanted immediate loading patient did not have a very high budget i would say 
65 plus patient doesn't have high aesthetic needs what will be our choice of implants obviously it will be the kos bcs mu implants cement retained prosthesis for people who want to add, add the edge on top of it you can even do the intraoral welding and create a retrievable prosthesis next case segment case again cement retained for obvious reasons we don't want to do extensive sinus lip surgeries we want to keep our life simple this patient now missing teeth in upper jaw high end patient from the bone volume you know if you are smart enough just from the bone volume and looking at the opg you will come to know that the in, if there was a molar over here if there was a molar over here just assume there was a molar over here okay now if you look very carefully just from the opg x ray also just see this how much is the interocular space available is this space enough if not of course you can check clinically make a rpd and test how much space you are so if you want to do cement retain prosthesis over here the first step you should do is actually remove bone and then place the implant or you can simply go for the if the patient is affording the screw retained implants and finish the case here i have used the kos bcs mu implant two piece implants again now if you look at the case extremely resolved rich sinus is totally pneumatized patient is not allowing for a zygomatic implant okay we are not sure whether the after extraction how much torque we will get in this region why would i ask or even offer the patient in the best of my senses a immediate load solution only to cause a problem or failure later on our job is to make our life easy not make it complicated and get gold medal after every case extracted placed the ch implants in good torque loaded after 2 3 months combination cases upper jaw resorb bcs implants screw uh, welding retrieval prosthesis given lower screw retained implant prosthesis so technically upper and lower jaw both are retrieval prosthesis one is with bcs kos other is with the mixture of cih and dsi implant is your mind opening up to new ideas are you able to understand how you can play with the system look at this anterior patient is ready to pay so this patient walks in having the aesthetic requirement as well as the functional requirement anteriors done immediate loading posterior done delayed loading see this situation patient is having such an infected socket over here in the lower six pneumatized sinus poor bone quality delayed loading immediate extraction delayed loading anteriors high aesthetic need patient ready to pay immediate loading so think sensibly charge sensibly see what works best for you okay see this case totally resorb rich maxilla mandible two piece zygomatic implants which means the zygomatic implants are two piece the other implants are single piece why i was not sure about the torque even the zygomatic bone used looked very weak now imagine you plan a basal implant and you don't get torque how will you bend the implant so two piece zygomatic implant 
all other implants single piece so are you able to understand how to make the thought process how to plan for your cases how the system is helping you in various scenarios depending not only about the bone but depending on the patient's pain capacity depending upon your clinical skills depending upon the interocular clearance depending upon need for retrievability depending upon patient's pain capacity depending upon your skills how many of you find this kind of discussion an eye opener for yourself all those who are venturing doing implantology have you thought about implantology from this angle is yes, dr salil don't worry we'll see if we can arrange the recording also many people are messaging me also we'll see what we can do don't worry about that right now i request you to pay attention in the lecture so you can get grasp the idea is to change the mindset first how many of you have thought about implantology like this type thought those who have not thought type not thought in the comment box how many of you are premium whatsapp group members or premium members just let me know me in the comment box because very soon i am having an exclusive practice management session only for the premium group members so how many of you are premium group members please let me know those of you have thought about implantology this way type me those who have not thought put because it's okay to keep discussing science but our ultimate aim is to also make our i have seen people who are you know practicing they don't have time for themselves they have health issues they are totally like bored in life doing what they are doing that's not how we want to work for the next 10 15 20 years how many of you agree to me that arline implant series is like one system which can you know kind of encompass almost everything and anything which you would probably think about implantology even you know if you i you know i always remember this one line by bruce lee you might have heard it in my lecture also he says that i don't fear the person who has practiced 10000 kicks listen to this carefully he says i don't fear the person who has practiced 10000 kicks i practice the i fear the person i fear the person who has practiced one kick 10000 times i don't fear the person who has practiced 10000 kicks i fear the person who has practiced one kick 10000 times so if you have mastered one system one thought process one protocol do you agree that every kind of implantology case you will be able to handle rather than every time thinking about new and new things new system increasing your stress increasing your armamentarium and coming back to step 1 again after some time my team member has already put up the premium whatsapp group link those of you who want to join you can join it's a paid membership it's like peanuts i think less than that less than 1200 $1, rupees something like that but with that you also get around 12 webinars such webinars which will be informative and eye openers to you so the idea of having a paid group is only for the serious members because i see lot of people if they don't have time they just come and sit in the webinar that's okay you are welcome 
but for serious members who want to take their practice to the next level it is all about investment in terms of time money energy i mean no one can give you anything on a plate and serve it to you will have to put your time money energy along if you are really serious about the game so those of you who are already part of the premium group please let me know uh, premium in the comment box those who are planning to join can also put up yes in the comment box uh, those who are not yet decided no problem you can take your time but just want to know how many premium group members are there and how, because soon i'm going to put up a case management presentation in only for our premium group members so the link is already shared in the group you can you are welcome to join along with the joining you will be getting 12 complimentary webinars which will further enhance your existing knowledge great great so nice to see lot of you taking the advantage of the premium group also where you can ask your queries day in day out and a lot, lot of deeper discussions keep happening in the premium group great dr gautam great great to know all of this also we have our upcoming course on immediate load implants what's the date please 27 to 29th of this month i think couple of seats are remaining so those of you who wish to are welcome for this program and we are also having a separate one day lecture only on zygomatic it's a offline lecture in bombay only on zygomatic pterygoid and nerve bypass with conventional and basal implant so this all details my team member is sharing with you regarding the 3 day program those of you who have not joined our inner circle group you can join our in, inner circle groups also i think that will be very informative to all of you so inner circle group is totally free for all premium group is a paid membership upcoming 3 day course on immediate load implants where we are going to discuss about the pterygoid implants now bypass cement retain screw retain prosthesis much more in detail along with the intraoral welding various prosthetic tips and tricks for their pass for 3 days along with that subsequently later on in the month of october we will be having one day course on zygomatic pterygoid and nerve bypass with the conventional and basal implants so those of you who are interested in this programs you need to note the number of three sa enterprise which is 9321533493 that is three sa enterprise so those of you who are also interested in having the brochure for the implant cih dsi qs bcs mu you can just connect with them i am not spamming this group with so many messages or you can visit our website which is www.bazelimplant store.com for more information regarding this courses programs and products